play a character called Andy Rawlinson, and um, he he was kind of he was he was really good friends with with Julia um, with Julia Lucan who who dies um, who died um, twelve years previously, and. I kind of feel like his life kind of came to a bit of a halt when she died and that, that he's still kind of trying to go over like the death and it had such a kind of such a strong effect on his life as indeed it did to, to his father's, uh, her father's life, to Julia's father's life. He's a self-made businessman whose daughter, who was a, uh, a musical genius, died 12 years ago in the room where this play is set. Ghost story. That's what it is, it's a ghost story. It's a, it is a ghost story by Alan Acorn. Alan Acorn, one of our greatest, you know, writers certainly in the last 30 years, 40 years maybe. I first saw my first Acorn probably in the mid 70s. And he's still going strong. And when he writes a play, it's, it's, a, it's a marvelous play. He used to wind me up a lot like that. He's incredibly, I don't know, inexperienced. Gullible. It's pathetic, really. But women can always, can't they? When they feel like it. You know, turn you inside out. As well as it being a ghost story, it's, it's a bit of a whodunit where you're trying to work out who is responsible. And, who, and in a way, we all are. Like, we're all carrying around a bit of guilt with us, so it, they're interesting characters to play. Well, I think they can expect sheer terror. To you and explain. Well, you better bloody hat. Excuse us. Yeah, you know, that's quite all right. Perhaps I shouldn't have said it was peaceful. I'm here to stand. <laughs> I need you here, Andy, because you're part of this. Even if you don't believe in what I'm doing, even if you think I'm completely by it, and I know you do, you still have to be here. So bear with me, please. And just what is it you are doing, Joel? Precisely. I want to know why she died. I think we had to stop the show four times because people had reacted. Sometimes, there was one occasion where somebody was genuinely ill, but at other times it actually freaked people out. And, uh, and we had to stop the show until things were settled down and sorted out and then we could carry on. And that was very extraordinary because we felt, well, Julia really is here, isn't she? But the characters are really interesting and really quite complex and are carrying around all this guilt and all this stuff that they're trying to move, move beyond and throughout the course of the play they somehow manage to do that. I mean, everybody thinks actors are the doddle of a life. Well, it, it is so. It is true. It is a doddle. This is no brain power, you know, there's not much going on. The lines are there, you just say them and, the, you know, the audience interpret them as they would wish. But this, well, you, you've got to interpret them for an audience, and you've got to tell them, and you've got to point them in the right direction, and that's some kind of a joint effort between us, the director, lighting, music, sound, everything. It's it's fantastic doing doing um, theatre because you know you go on there, you work really hard all night. If it goes well, you see the reaction. Whereas with when you do television, you do it, you forget about it, and a year later or maybe eighteen months later, it comes on, and you don't really feel like you had very much to do with it. So it's fantastic doing theatre because you instantly get to see people's reaction.